the Physical Science Lesson video for Section 4.3, and as always, if you want my videos all in one spot, just subscribe to my channel. So, we're going to move on to more modern atomic theory, instead of going all the way back in history to where we've discovered some problems, like with plum pudding model. So, in Bohr's model, the electrons move with a constant speed in fixed orbitals around the nucleus. Each electron in an atom has a specific amount of energy. So in Bohr's model, instead of just saying, oh, the electrons are somewhere in the electron cloud, like Rutherford's model says, we are putting them in specific orbitals, kind of like planets going around the sun, but not the, entirely the same. So if an atom gains or loses energy, the energy level of an electron can change. So for example, if this uh, electron gains energy, it can jump up to the next, what we call, energy level. So the possible energies that electrons in an atom can have are called energy levels. So this would be our first energy level, this would be our second. So again, in order to get to the second energy level, this electron would need to gain enough energy to jump to that next energy level. An electron in an atom can move from one energy level to another when it gains or loses. So I just gave you an example of where it can gain energy and jump up an energy level, but it could also lose energy and fall to a lower energy level. And it doesn't have to be one at a time. Like if you notice here, it's dropped two energy levels. So it's just all about how much energy does that electron have. The movement of electrons between energy levels explains the light you see when fireworks explode. Light is a form of energy. Because no two elements have the same set of energy levels, different elements emit different colors of light. So what happens is when we provide energy through, for example, fireworks, through fire, through heat, those electrons, they gain energy and so they jump to a higher energy level. Well, eventually the fire goes away and there's no more heat, so they lose the energy and fall. And when they lose the energy, it comes in the form of light that we can see. Now, there is some um, energy you'll lose that we can't see that's outside of the visible spectrum, but we can see some of it. And then every element has its own color of light because every element has its own set of energy levels. When all the electrons in an atom have the lowest energy possible, the atom is said to be in ground state. So when we add just the right amount of electrons to each energy level and none have gained energy and jumped up, it's referred to as ground state. If one or more electrons have jumped to higher energy levels, it's referred to as being an excited state. And as you can imagine, excited state is not very stable, so what goes up must come down. So once you stop adding energy, the electrons will fall back down to ground state. Each energy level can hold a maximum number of electrons. So the first energy level can hold up to two electrons. Then you have to move on to the second one, which can hold eight. The third one can hold 18, and the fourth one can hold 32. And if you move on to chemistry, we'll go into the most accepted modern uh, form of the atom, which is the quantum mechanical model, and we'll break this down a little bit further. But in physical science, the furthest we go is Bohr's model, so that's what I have to teach you. So an electron dot diagram shows the placement of electrons in the energy levels. So see we have two in the first one, and then we have one, two, three, four, five in the second energy level. So I can't put a third one in the first energy level because it can only hold, whoop, I hold up one finger, it can only hold two electrons. So when is an electron in an atom likely to move from one energy level to another? Well, it can either lose or gain energy. So if it loses or gains energy, that's when it will either move up or down. Number two, what models do scientists use to describe how electrons move around the nucleus? Well, in this chapter, we say Bohr's model. Of course, in reality, like I said, it will be quantum mechanical model. But for our class, we'll say Bohr's model. Number three, describe the most stable configuration of electrons in the atom. Remember, excited is unstable. What goes up must come down. And when are the electrons in their lowest level possible? Ground state. So ground state. Or, or you can say the electrons are in the lowest energy level possible. Number four, what did Bohr contribute to modern atomic theory? Well, he's the one who came up with the energy levels and the fact that electrons can move to different energy levels. So really he has two parts. He came up with the idea of energy levels and that electrons can change energy levels by losing or gaining energy. What does an electron cloud represent? The electron cloud just shows the area where your energy levels exist, which means the area your electrons will be present. All right, and then number six, a boron atom has two electrons in the first energy level and three in the second energy level. Compare the relative energies of the electrons in these two energy levels. Well, the two electrons in the first energy level would have a lower energy 
than the two, the three in the second. Because as you go up in energy level, those electrons have to have more energy. So you can just say the two electrons in the first energy level have less energy than the three electrons in the second energy level. All right, so hopefully now you understand a little bit more about Bohr's model for the atom um, and how those electrons can jump to different energy levels.